What is up, everybody? This is Jamie from the Lightning Round Podcast. And I'm here today to talk about the big Chargers news of the restructured contracts of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. So for those of you who follow the show, you know that we did a uh, internal free agent and kind of cap relief show a couple weeks ago where we talked about the moves we thought the Chargers needed to and would make in order to get cap compliant prior to the March 17th deadline. And we outlined a series of cuts that we thought the Chargers needed to and would make. Two of those cuts, or two, I'm sorry, not cuts, two, we outlined a series of restructures the Chargers, we thought the Chargers would and needed to make. And two of those restructures that we outlined were the restructures of Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Allen was one that was kind of obvious because he had a big cap number and it seemed like an obvious place to either make a cut, as some were suggesting, or to restructure. Mike was somewhat less obvious in the second year of his brand new deal, something that I didn't really hear anybody suggesting anywhere was restructuring Mike Williams. So this was probably the only place where you would have heard that if you watched that show. At any rate, the Chargers went ahead and restructured Keenan and Mike. So I thought what we do is we kind of break down how they bro- how they restructured those contracts, what it entails, what it means for 2023 and what it means for 2024. And then maybe we can look into the future a little bit and look at some additional restructures um, that the Chargers can and probably should make and maybe one potential uh, extension as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, So we'll start with Keenan's, right? So Keenan, we knew, had a big cap number. Um, Heading into this year, Keenan had a cap number of somewhere around $22.5 million. Uh, some pretty big money that was made up of fifteen and a half million dollars in um, in salary, base salary, two point seven million dollars in prorated signing bonus, and another three and a half million dollars in roster bonuses. Um, it was pretty obvious the Chargers could not go into this year with Keenan making his with his contract structured in that way, so they had to make a change. And what we what we suggested was basically taking $14 million of his $15.5 million salary and taking his $3.5 million roster bonus for a total of $17.5 million, turning it into a signing bonus and prorating it over the 2023 and 2024 seasons. That's pretty much exactly what they did. Uh, basically, that would have left him with a million and a half dollars in, uh, in base salary. They actually took a little bit more. They had some room to take more. I wasn't sure if they would, but they did. Um, They took a tiny bit more. So he's got just a little under one and a half million dollars remaining on his contract on on his base salary for this year. Uh, And they wound up saving themselves right around nine million dollars this year uh, against the cap. That's a little over eight point seven five million dollars is the number. Um, So basically what that means is for this year. He's got roughly a million and a half dollars in base salary. He's going to have an $11.45 million prorated signing bonus for this year. Now, remember, he already was paid his signing bonus uh, when he signed his original contract. Uh, he had he originally had $2.7 million in prorated signing bonus this year. That had already been paid. It's just prorated uh, over the course of the deal for cap purposes. So same thing here. They're taking money he money that was pretty much guaranteed to him anyway, removing the roster bonus and combining it to make roughly $17.5 million in signing bonus and prorating it, basically spreading it out evenly over the 2023 and 2024 seasons. So now Keenan's much more affordable for the 2023 season. The downside is uh, he's much less affordable for the 2024 season. And basically what that means is Keenan has an $18.1 million um, base salary for 2024. Uh, None of that is guaranteed. He also has another roughly $11.5 million in prorated signing bonus due next year. Again, already paid to him, but it hits against the cap next year as opposed to it hitting against the cap this year or all at the front end of the contract. And there's a $5 million roster bonus. So if things stay the way they are right now, Keenan's uh, total cap hit for next year is $35.5 million, $35.55 million. That's his cap hit for next year. Uh, Of course, there could be an opportunity to possibly um, 
restructure that contract going into the 2024 season and spread some more money that around. There could be an opportunity to extend Keenan prior to next year. Um, and there could also be an opportunity to cut him next year. If they decided to cut him, you'd be looking at basically $23 million, a little over $23 million saved for 2024 versus an $11.5 million cap hit. I've heard people, seen people on Twitter talking about how the Chargers don't like dead, dead cap money. They're not going to cut him. They're stuck with that contract. That's not really how this stuff works. Um, really, when you're looking at making a, a, a cap casualty cut type of a move, what you're ultimately looking at is, can you save money by cutting this player? And in this case, the Chargers would be saving double what they'd be incurring in dead cap this is an easy no-brainer move. If they decide it's time to move on from Keenan prior to next year, they could cut him. They would cut him as a pre-June 1 cut because there's no there's no years left on his contract. There were no void years added to this restructure. Um, and there's no there's no time left on the deal, so there's no way to spread that money around via a post-June 1 cut, which I've seen suggested. So if they do cut Keenan prior to the 2024 season, it will be – via a pre-June 1 cut, and it will save them basically $23.1 million. So that's the Keenan restructure. Let's talk about the Mike Williams restructure. As we all know, Mike signed a contract extension last season, right? He he was due $12 million in base salary this year, plus $7 million in prorated signing bonus. Um, they, have an, they had an opportunity, in my opinion, to basically restructure $10 million. And they wound up restructuring just a little over $10 million. So Mike, going into this year, he now has a one, little over a $1 million base salary. Um, <clears throat> he also will have a $12.5 million, give or take, um, $12.5 million prorated uh, signing bonus. Um, so his total cap number is going to be basically $13.5 million, give or take. Uh, that's a number you can definitely handle with Mike, not a problem. Uh, next year, things get a little tougher. Next year, his cap number, his total cap number goes to uh, thirty, almost $33 million. It's $32.5 million basically is what it comes out to. Uh, and that is comprised of $17 million in base salary, none of which is guaranteed next year, another roughly $12.5 million in prorated signing bonus, and a $3 million roster bonus. Uh, so basically what that means is he's good to go this year. Next year, if the teams decide they're ready to move on, uh, Mike, they can cut Mike, and they can save $20 million via the roster bonus, and the $17 million base salary and eat basically $12.5 million, give or take, um, just rounding up a little bit there. So again, you're talking about saving more than you are incurring in dead cap. Uh, not quite as much savings there as it is with Keenan, but it still makes sense. They're saving, you know, it's basically a net gain of $8 million is if you want to look at it that way, but overall they're saving $20 million. And that is something that I think they would be more than happy to do um, if it meant eating $12.5 million to do it. So that's the Mike and Keenan extensions. I do think there are a couple of other opportunities for them. Uh, the first opportunity would be to, to restructure Corey Lindsley. And that particular restructure, I have them restructuring $6 million uh, over the next three years, the final three years of Lindsley's deal. Uh, and basically what that means is if they did what I'm suggesting, they would save themselves $4 million this year. Um, they, there are opportunities. They could, I was conservative, admittedly. I was conservative. They could save more. They could take uh, Lindsay all the way down to the vet minimum and probably restructure somewhere around 8 or $9 million and save a little bit more if they wanted to. Probably not necessary unless they've got a signing they really want to make and they know they can get it done. Uh, but I would I would expect them at this point to restructure Lindsley. Um, most of the most of the uh, guarantees on his deal are pretty much done. Uh, there's no guaranteed salary left. There's no roster bonuses left on his deal. Uh, they they could restructure him and still conceivably cut him going to 2024 if that's a move that they they feel they need to make. 
uh, without much headache. They'd still save a bunch of money on in that regard. And then the last one is Joey Bosa. And Bosa is, Bosa is a big one. Uh, Bosa, they can restructure $21 million this year in base salary and save themselves $14 million against the cap this year. Uh, it would be a huge boon for them. They would save a ton of money. The downside of it is right now they have the ability to get out of Joey Bosa's contract after uh, in 2025, I believe. Um, if they were to restructure Joey the way I'm suggesting, they would not be able to get out of his contract next year. Um, they would have to wait till 2025. So, you know, they're kind of pushing out their reject button a little bit on that contract. But I do think it's something that they need to do, especially if they're looking to add some starters uh, in free agency and retain some of their key players who are free agents. They are going to need to free up money because even with the $14 million they freed up against the cap tonight or today with Mike and Keenan's extensions, they are still somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 to $8 million over the cap. So they are still are not cap compliant. So there are definitely more moves coming. And the last move that I would expect that I think has a really good chance of happening, I would say, would be a Mike Davis, Michael Davis extension. Not a restructure, but an extension, something that gives him an extra two years with the team, maybe three, depending on how much they believe in him, and spreads out some of the money, some of the cap hit from this year, turns it into signing bonus and spreads it out, uh, much like the restructure. But in this case, you're adding years uh, just because their cornerback their cornerback room is so in flux right now. They don't know what's going to happen with JC Jackson's injury. Um, they don't have a whole lot of experience behind Michael Davis and Zant. And I think uh, at keeping Mike around for a couple of years, Michael Davis around for a couple more years would be a very smart move for them based on the way he played last year. So that's something that I would look out for as well. Um, so that's it. Uh, they do have an opportunity to get somewhere around $24, $25 million under the cap. They could go more with more restructures or extensions if they want to. Uh, but there there are plenty of ways to get themselves both under the cap and you know cap compliant and in a position to make some moves in free agency, uh, which I think they'll do. Um, so thank you. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something about the cap today. I hope this was helpful. Uh, we will keep an eye out. On our YouTube channel, on Twitter, we will be announcing a move to a new network very soon. We will also be releasing a lot of new and different types of content uh, for you guys to enjoy throughout the draft process and, and into the off season. So uh, keep an eye out for that as well. Thanks for all the support. We really appreciate it. And we will talk to you soon.